to see guys come around, take advantage of my mum because there was drugs on the table and stuff like that. And it was it was not a nice feeling, you know, like I've seen guys hit my mum. Got Michael and Camilla and then there's Raphael. In 2018, we had Ariel. I love is real. It feels surreal. Subscribe to our channel and enjoy the frill. A typical date in a noble's household. We come from London where it's always cold. Daddy has to change the baby's bum bum. Whilst mommy has to soothe Raphael's tum tum. Things are crazy as you can tell. At the end of everything it ends all well. The nobles. The nobles. Welcome back, Noble Familiar. I'm a bit nervous. Sorry about this. I'm going to be shooting a video by myself. It's something that I wanted to talk to people about. There isn't a better way to share that than to share that with people that you can potentially have a positive impact on. I'm going to be talking about growing up, the difficulties that I had in my life, um, how it affected me, and how I didn't really seek help or speak to anybody about it and it just kind of built up and then yeah it eventually it had like a big impact on me so growing up i lived in stratford that's when i was a baby growing to like three four years old uh, my mum she was a beautiful lady she came out of bernardo's i don't know if any, any of you guys know about bernardo's it's like a, a children's charity where kids go when they no parents and stuff to kind of live with so my mum came out of bernardo a pretty young lady for her the struggle was not having a mum not having a dad and kind of like this wanting attention but what happened with that was like she would go out and like all these guys would time and talk to my mom and stuff like that you know and like because she wanted attention and you know she was a bit weak guys took advantage of that so what happened after all of that she got pregnant and there came me it was difficult because what i can remember as a child is i remember having no father <clears throat> To have a mum there who was struggling, who needed help, you know, she she didn't have much money. It was it was like it was poverty. And for me, I used to always question myself when I was a little child, like why don't I have a father? Why has my father left me? The thing is, to this day, I don't know who my father is. And my mum, she she at the time she was seeing two people and she's not sure which one it is, but she's more pushing towards one person. And that one person, he was around when I was a little child. And things she used to say to me, like he used to, he used to push me away and stuff. And I'm like, how can a father push his son away from him? That thought of rejection, it, it wasn't a nice feeling. So yeah, growing up it was difficult because it was just my mum and it was me. And, and during that time, I don't know if, probably, probably some people can relate. Um, but like my mum, she used to take drugs. Mum, I know if you're watching this, I'm not trying to make you look bad I just want to be honest she used to go out and stuff like that and drugs you could see was having an impact on her life you know so like come come four or five years old six you know I was I was living in Stratford and my mum was taking drugs I used to see things and st some of the things I used to see was like I'll give you some examples like I used to see my mum taking the drugs physically with somebody you know that I'm a kid I don't even know what it is like I could just smell this disgusting smell and I'm like what is that um, and I knew it was bad, but I couldn't do nothing because I was a little kid. I used to see guys come around, take advantage of my mum because there was drugs on the table and stuff like that. And it was it was not a nice feeling, you know. Like I've seen guys hit my mum. It's it's difficult because when you see a guy hit a woman, it's like why are you doing that? Like I would never hit a woman. I've never hit a woman, and I don't believe that that you should do that. But then obviously because drugs were her weakness, they knew what to put in front of her. So all these little things like. They began to scar me. Like at night, people knock on the door, I was scared. So come, I think I was nine years old, my mum got pregnant with my little brother. That was another tough time because literally at the time she was pregnant, she wasn't like looking after herself, you know, she was still taking drugs. We've got a blessing here. Like why, why are you trying to, to hurt him, damage him? And even at nine years old, because I saw these things, I was maturing quite fast. Like, you know, I was experiencing things and seeing things from a young age. And I was just like, what, what is all this stuff? And I knew I didn't like these things. I knew I didn't like drugs. I knew I didn't like my mum taking drugs and doing stuff and drinking and smoking when, when she had uh, my brother. But I couldn't do nothing. So again, more things started to build up. But during this process that um, my mum was pregnant, because obviously I had no father. I don't know who my grandparents are. You know, at the time it was just like, 
all this stuff I was seeing and there was no one, never no one to really talk to. I feel like my way for getting through things was to play sports, play football, be at the house. And I was trying to be friends with people, but like they always knew I was the guy that didn't have much money. You know, I always felt like I was the one getting pushed aside. You know, like people go in their mates' houses and I wasn't invited. So it was these little things like I just, I just kind of knew my place and I knew it was mainly because, you know, like I was a black boy, my mum took drugs, people knew what she was doing and then people started to single me out for it. So it wasn't a good feeling. During that, that period that my mum was pregnant, I was in and out of foster care. Throughout my whole life, I've been in and out of foster care. It's, it's a crazy feeling. Like, it's the fact that you're going away from your parent, but you're going to somebody who, who's going to look after you, but you know they're not your blood. So I found that difficult. Cut a long story short, like, so my mum had my brother. As soon as he was born, he went into intensive care um, because of the smoking and the drugs. Um, he was a beautiful little boy, he had tight little curls in his hair. From literally from like the age of one to I would say two years old, so from like the nine to eleven, I was literally like his father. He was literally like my little little partner in crime. But I loved him, like I knew he was my blood. I didn't have no family, so I valued him so much, like he was my little my little baby, if that makes sense. So come to the age of uh, eleven, a big thing happened in, in my life, which was I was at home on a Sunday and my mum hit my brother um, and he was crying, he was crying really loud and the next door neighbours called the police and before you knew it I was in the police station, my mum got arrested and then yeah straight after that we went straight into foster care and I thought yeah like, I've gone into foster care like before you know like I'll go back to my mum soon and stuff like that but in this situation I wasn't stupid like I'm because I had matured very fast, I was quite a smart guy as well like I knew what was happening, I knew we wasn't going to be going back to my mum which was quite a damaging and it had a, it had a big impact on me Loxley and Ruth I love you so much you guys are literally like my my um you're literally like my parents my my father my my mum you took me in you took me and my brother in at a time that was really challenging for us um, my mum was in a bad place and you took us in you know they accepted us and before I knew it like it was we were staying there permanently during the time that I just entered foster care something happened. I was at home one day at my foster family's and then um, there, was a, there was a phone call from the hospital and it said, um, <clears throat> sorry, your mum's in hospital, um, can you please be Michael here to identify her? I'm like, identify my mum, is she dead or something? Like, why do I need to go to the hospital to identify my mum? So what happened next literally scarred me for life. Right back now, I'm talking about things that I've never really I don't, I've never found it easy to speak, speak about. A lot of things you guys are hearing, a lot of people that know me, you're gonna be hearing these things for the first time. But basically what happened was, my mum, she overdosed and she was literally taken to the hospital and she was put on a life support machine. Imagine being like 11 year old boy and then you're like, you go into the hospital and then you're like, oh my God, Oh, there's my mum and my mum's like she's laying on this bed and there's like wires going in and out of her she literally nearly died but like basically that's it in a, in a nutshell she took so many pills and stuff and it literally nearly killed her thank god after all that happened she came through it you know she's a fighter my mum is a fighter she's been through so much she's been treated bad she lost her kids if i lost my kids i, I don't know i don't i don't see the point of me being here so i can understand how my mum was feeling but the fact that she wanted to take her life, and she nearly did take her life, that's my only family. So, the fact that I could have potentially lost my, own, my only family was this, and then I had my brother, it was literally like, I was just gonna be left there with my brother, and I have no one else. I went back home afterwards and sat in my room and I cried, it scarred me. I'm not even gonna lie. One thing foster care gave me, um, I feel like people really need to like, really praise foster carers. You know, like, that gave me stability. I felt loved. It gave me the feeling of a family. I knew I had a secure, a secure roof over my head. Um, I was with my brother, so he was sleeping next to me, so I knew I was always there to protect him. These guys were bloody fantastic in my eyes. And then I was in school and I was doing really well in school. I kind of put on myself to learn things and to really concentrate when I'd done my studies. And I did really well in school. Like, I was like in a gifted and talented class. I was like, super good at loads of different sports. I started to excel 
because I had that stability. But during like the next sort of five years from foster care, I saw my mum, it was like, you know, I'll go see her now and again. And it was just, yeah, she was still up and down. She, she tried to um, commit suicide a few other times after that. At 19, I came out. So I was like at college at the time. And then because that, in foster care, when you're like 18 or 19, you need to go out to live by yourself, independent living. And after that, I kind of moved to my flat, which was, uh, it was weird. Like, oh my God, there you go. Uh, come from a home that you were securing, you were safe in, you looked after, clothed, bathed, everything you could think of. And now there you go, there's your own flat. Even though I knew, I knew I didn't have much, I wanted to make sure I was coming home to a home that I felt safe in. There was a bit after this, when I was, I would say in my like early 20s, a lot of my past started to affect me. Basically what started to happen was because I was living by myself, I had four walls and you know, like, Many people that knew me would be like, oh, Michael's a cool guy. They didn't see another side to me, which was like quite down. I was quite depressed. I was quite sad. Basically, I'll tell you what, what used to trigger these emotions. It was going out after the night um, with my mates and then I'll come home and um, and I used to sit at home sometimes and I would just come home and I would, I would like cry and stuff like I used to ask myself, it's like, why? Why me? Why has my dad left me? You know, like I knew I would have probably excelled further in my life with things like football and stuff like that if um, I had a father figure there. My mum never really understood all them things. Um, things like seeing guys hit my mum. Everything just used to pile up on me and I didn't really know how to deal with it. The problem with me was that all these things built up and I never ever spoke to nobody about it. I mean, some of my close friends and maybe a few partners that I was with in the past, but I didn't tell them everything. I used to always focus on the positive as well because I knew I could have gone another direction, but I didn't go in that direction. So like you always hear so much bad stories about kids that were in foster care, they came out and they started becoming drug dealers or they gone and killed somebody or they do, they do nothing with their life. They're sitting at home doing nothing. And that wasn't me because I always, I always had this focus that I always wanted to do better in my life. And if I ever had a family, I always wanted to make sure that my family had everything that I didn't have. I was very focused, but I was scarred. And then one time, there was one bad time, never ever spoke to anybody about this. I came home from a night out and I literally was really down. Basically what happened in a nutshell, and it's, it's not easy to say this to, to the people watching and stuff like that, because you know I'm kind of like, unwrapping myself here and just saying hey look at me like one night I was just here and I just literally felt suicidal I never used to feel suicidal like I used to feel down and I used to ask questions but I never felt suicidal and what I did is I, I kind of took a few pills and stuff like that I was just like take me now like what was the point at the time I was working and stuff but I just felt like there was no point in me being here but then I kind of stopped myself from taking more I tried to start the process and when I look back at it I just feel like why did I do that and stuff like that I was stupid woke up the next morning like what the hell am I doing and stuff like that and it just it just I felt stupid and I felt embarrassed I just said to myself no fuck up stop this Mike like you're better than this you're stronger than this like why are you trying to take your own life like you've seen your mum I've seen my mum take her own life like what am I trying to do like it my brother doesn't even know about this no one really knows about this that's that was it that, that was my most of my life like the whole point of this video was for you guys to get to know me a little bit better. I kind of wanted to talk about my past because I know by me talking about some of the things that I couldn't talk about before, it might enable somebody else who's struggling or has a tough upbringing to, to talk about their past as well. I really feel that if I spoke about a lot of these things, I probably wouldn't have got to the point where I was going out drinking, feeling depressed, feeling emotional. Like I wouldn't have done that, but I was never, strong enough to speak to anybody. I never pull it out there. I never said to my foster care, I need to see a psychiatrist. So I hope that this video can kind of help people that struggle to talk about things, to kind of open up. I only really opened up to my wife properly, like deep, um, about some of the things that happened to me. And she's a really good listener, so she, she listened to me very well. I hope guys that if you've, seen something or you've experienced something and you're in a situation where you feel that you're by yourself that you really try and seek help but i hope that by me speaking about what i've been through it can have a positive impact on some other people out there it doesn't have to be disguised it doesn't it can be everybody 
depression is a big thing. I've been reading a lot about it. Um, footballers, I've seen a lot of footballers come out about the depression and you know, just, it makes you do things that you shouldn't do. It was just literally dragging me to the ground and dragging me deeper and deeper and deeper. And I kind of, I didn't really know how to come out of that. The main thing that's changed my mindset was meeting my wife um, and then having my kids. My kids are my everything. They are my world. The fact that, you know, that I met the woman in my dreams, like, that was like the shining beacon that just took me to this other place. Um, and ever since I've had my kids and that I've met Camilla, I have not thought about my past. I've moved out of this dark place because I know that I have people that rely on me, people that I love. My kids need to see the positive of me. They need to see me as a role model. I had no family, so to have my kids, it was less like the most wonderful thing ever. Guys, when you see this, when you get a bit older, or you watch it whenever you watch it, I love you so much. You changed me for the better. But guys, please, if you experience any bad experiences in the past, or you've had really bad, real bad depression, please speak to somebody about it. Even if you wanted to speak to me, like I'm, I'm a good listener, I, can, I feel like I give good advice as well. If you don't want to speak to your close friends or your family, then try and seek professional help. It's out there, use it, because if you don't, then you can get to the point which I got to was thinking about taking my life. If you want to show my video to somebody that you feel that struggles to talk about things and you know they've had, they've experienced quite a lot of bad things in their past, then I hopefully that that will enable them to talk a little bit more. So, thank you for watching today's video. Subscribe to our channel, The Noble Familiar. If you haven't subscribed already, please leave some comments below. Please understand that this video was really difficult to do. I was a nervous wreck. I'm sitting here by myself, talking about my past. It has not been easy. So have a wonderful day, evening, whenever you're watching this, and we'll catch up soon. Mwah.